Okay, I'm back uh, in the tool set again, and again, this one is just to recap what we've done and how do we continue. So, uh, as our Persistent World developer, um, we want to start adding some new areas. So, we're going to do things like, you know, create a new area, you know, my tavern, or whatever, you know, the area is going to be. And, you know, again, I'm not so good with this kind of thing. So I'm just going to you know, throw a door down. Yeah, real pretty, eh? <laughs> and uh, a couple of walls. Maybe we'll just make a little room or something. There. And... Boink. Boink. Yeah, see? This is, uh, this is where I have my epic fail. <laughs> I need one that looks like this. There we go. There. So there's our uh, tavern. And again, you just throw some placeables around, put a door on it, and all that good stuff. Again, like all of our, whenever we're ready, you know, I put some monsters or whatever in here. I'm going to bake my area because it is a brand new area. Bake my area. Yes. And uh, close that. And now I got, you know, a new area and a course. Um, I can modify some scripts and things. Then I say, uh, you know, let's just say I've finished making all my changes uh, to my persistent world, and I need to get it out to the to the public. Uh, there's there's two things I have to do. Number one, again, as mentioned previously, if I create new areas, I'll have to stage the client areas. If I did not create this area and I just fixed some bugs in scripts, for example, or added some counters or added some chests or changed things. If I didn't change the world, you know, if I didn't change an area's uh, terrain or an inside, if I never had to basically bake anything, then I and, and never added a hack pack, I don't need to do this part again. I only need to do this because I've created a new area. So, looking back at our two folders, here they are, the client folder with the three files in there. We're going to have to do that because we had a new area. Now we can skip our hack pack this time because we uh, we didn't add or change anything to the hack packs and we can hit scan and we hit stage. Again these never work so don't worry about it. As long as it says complete we can say done. We go back to here, look at client and look here we go we got an additional file. Let's say we can't remember that though we can always open up the files txt and as I said before every time you run it changes, it'll generate a space and then show you the new files that have to be moved up. So again, we open up our shared folder to our server, go to Dropbox, public, and copy our new file over for our tavern. Again, I, I didn't link these two areas together with an area transistor or nothing, but use your imagination, you know how this works. Uh, so that part is done. Client piece is done. And now I have to do the server part. Prepare game server files. I can skip the hack packs because I know that nothing's changed there. Hit stage. Hit close. Now there's a comment I'm going to make here. Uh, obviously, no hack pack changed, no TLK changed, so stuff in my modules directory changed. So I'm going to have to go into modules on my server. Uh, you only have to copy over what you changed over here and you can find out what that is in this little files txt so here it is this is the first time I ran it and that was the second time we ran it when we had the bug we had the problem where these two files were missing and this is the time I just ran it just now it, now it's it's not exactly the most helpful thing because it doesn't have any timestamps and know it's blah at best but it will help you get an idea of what changed these are the files that I would have to copy out of modules over to my server restart my server and I'm done to me personally that's a pain it's a pain in the butt I don't bother doing that <laughs> what I do is I go into my module and I just copy the whole thing again anyway copy and then when it prompts do I want to overwrite I say yes, overwrite, and I'm done. <laughs> okay, I just I'm done with it. 
Now, unless my module resources is a gig in size, which is possible, but not typical, um, I won't, I'll do it that way. If my module is massive and that straight up copy, it is going to take me 20 minutes uh, to copy, then I'll go through the trouble of finding out what actually changed here and copy those over to the server and do it that way. But for the most part, I'll just copy the whole damn thing over again. Uh, again, anyway. So that's been staged, and I'm now done. So I can go to my server and go to NWNX and hit restart. Whenever you make changes to your server like that, you definitely want to do a restart for those changes to take effect. And then you wait a few minutes, and NWNX will take care of it for you. Um, also, uh, at this point, I can log back into the server and see the changes. Um, because we used the NWN, um, or sorry, because we had some Legends plugins, and we logged into our server once, I'm going to refresh this and show you. We'll notice that the info plugin created yet another table for our account uh, in our little NWN2 database. So that tells that shows you how NWNX is communicating with our um, MySQL database too. And we can see the content of it through here through this table data section. Um, we can see some other information here, you know, this player Marshall, whose character name was George the Great, was initialized. Um, things like that. The, these tables will be populated through your server itself as players enter and do things um, and your code, your scripts, if you're a scripter, um, makes changes to your MySQL. Um, it'll do that and through, you know, if you're using things like the Legends Info plugin or other Legends plugins through the toolset itself. So your database can be manipulated both ways. So that's it. That is how to create a persistent world complete with NWNX and MySQL. Uh, and that's it, running login at will. Uh, have fun and enjoy, and I hope this video helped you out. Um, again, you can email me or contact me on www.nwn2legends.com website if you have any questions. Uh, go check out the forums. Uh, and also, this little package that I have together that I use to create these those, those files in, in, my, um, in here scratch pad. These, I'll package all of these except this one because this one I'm not allowed to package up. It's it's the game itself, so I, 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 could I get away with it? I don't know, probably, but I'm not gonna because I'm just not gonna take that chance. Um, unless the author themselves, unless the publisher themselves come down and say yes you can and I'm not gonna do it. But I will put these other things in here um, because they're they're freely available for you to download and use. So that's what we're going to do. I'll package that up and put that on my website somewhere um, when I publish this video. And uh, feel free to use it. Again, if you've got any questions, uh, I'll see you on my website. Thanks for watching.